Hello, this is Pastor Malin Smith, pastor here at New Hope Baptist Church here in Watertown, New York, and I welcome you to our ongoing video series, Journeying Through the Books of the Bible. Our vision here at New Hope Baptist Church is living life together by bringing new hope in Jesus to all people. And in today's lesson, we're going to be considering Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, the book of Ephesians. And if we were to assign a theme to this book, it would be the Christian's inheritance. Now, when my father was alive, uh, he had an incredible gift for sharing his faith with others. And uh, in the latter years of his life, uh, he battled with cancer and all sorts of illnesses. And so oftentimes he would be in the hospital. And it just so happened that one time he was in the hospital, he had a roommate. And he began to open discussion with his roommate by saying these words, I'm an incredibly rich man. Matter of fact, I am so rich, I don't even know how much I am worth. And so his roommate uh, was intrigued. And as they began to dialogue and to talk, um, the man said, well, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, your wealth? And my dad just went on and on. Oh, yes, it's rich beyond compare. Uh, I have wealth untold. And then my dad was able to segue into telling this man, how he was spiritually rich in Jesus Christ. Now, even though my dad was going through so much at that time, even though he was battling illnesses and cancers and so on, nevertheless, he discovered through his faith in Christ, his true identity is not defined by his circumstance, not defined by the things of this world, but defined by Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus is all about. Now, Paul when he wrote the letter to the Ephesian church, he himself was imprisoned. He was under house arrest in Rome. And you can read all about uh, what went on in Paul's life in this particular point in his life in Acts chapters 21 to 28, how he would eventually make his journey to Rome when he faced various Roman officials, endured a shipwreck of all things, and then eventually in chapter 28, he would be under house arrest in Rome for two and a half years. And it was during that time that he bore witness of Christ uh, to many people. And out of that experience came forth four letters that we call the prison epistles, Ephesians being one of them. And so a man that was in prison, a man that was under the watchful gaze of the Roman Empire, and at least at that point in time uh, was facing serious charges, you would think a man like that would would really just be overwhelmed and discouraged to the point to where he uh, would begin to whittle away. But Paul had a clear vision of Christ and the rich inheritance of the Christian. One of the things that we discover here in the letter to the Ephesians is how often Paul makes mention of this rich inheritance and how it is that it gets better and better as you go along. So for example, in Ephesians 1, 14, we read, concerning the Holy Spirit that's given to Christians at salvation, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. And then as you begin to go throughout the rest of the letter, especially the first three chapters, you begin to see how Paul begins to expand upon this theme of the believer's inheritance. For example, we read here in Ephesians chapter 1, and verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, one of the things that we discover about the Christian life is that at salvation, Christ is made known to you by the Holy Spirit in the gospel. But throughout the remainder of the Christian life, Christ is being made known in you, the Holy Spirit, is making known to us all of the richness of Christ's person, his work, as well as the life that we have now in him. And so as Paul begins to expand upon this theme of inheritance, we find out it just gets better and better and better. When we come to Ephesians chapter 2, we see in verse 7, so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace. So note there, now we find out that these aren't just merely riches in Christ, no, no, these are surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And that's another phrase that you'll find 
repeated again and again throughout Paul's letter to the Ephesian church, namely how we're in Christ. That, that little phrase, in Christ, or another one, with Christ, all those have to do with one being in association with Christ. And so when we're in association with Christ, as a result of having trusted in him by faith, as a result of having applied to our hearts all that he achieved for us, we discover that in association with him, we enjoy all of the innumerable blessings that come with knowing Christ. So we see there in Ephesians 2, 7, how these riches, this inheritance, are, they're surpassing riches. And then notice again, if you will, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8, to me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ. So see how it's getting better and better and better? We saw surpassing riches in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, and now in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8, now we find out that this inheritance has to do with unfathomable riches. But it even gets better. Notice again, Ephesians 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. So, as you can see, Paul just keeps piling on adjective after adjective after adjective. More, abundantly, beyond. This inheritance of the Christian in Christ is beyond all that we can think or imagine. And thus, it's no wonder why Paul uh, ties in with this theme of inheritance, that of prayer. Because, really, uh, such an inheritance needs prayer not only to identify it, but to embrace it and to enjoy it. That's why he said in Ephesians 1.18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may, will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And so this spiritual inheritance is apprehended insofar as we give ourselves to the Lord in prayer as we walk with him in fellowship with his word. Now, if we were to outline the book of Ephesians, we could identify an outline basically in two parts. Of course, we've already seen in the first three chapters how we're incredibly rich. And as is typical of Paul's letters to the churches, the first part deals with doctrine, deals with sound truth. Uh, we call these gospel indicatives. That is, these describes this describes the realities of the Christian life. Then we see in the second part, chapters 4 to 6, how we're to live like we're rich. And this is what we call gospel imperatives. That is, the commands, the instructions, how we're to live in light of the truths that we see in chapters 1 to 3. And so, for example, as we turn to living like we're incredibly rich, we see in chapter 4 we're to walk as those who are called to such richness. This inheritance represents the calling that the Christian has to follow Jesus Christ, as well as the fact that we're to grow richly in him. Then in chapter 5 of Ephesians, we find out that we're to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. So uh, it's not just that we are to live like we're rich, but praise be to God, we have the Holy Spirit of God, and thus we are to live the Spirit-filled life. Paul writes in Ephesians 5.18, Do not be drunk with wine, wherein is success, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then in Ephesians chapters 5 and 6, we see then that this Christian inheritance isn't something only that we're to keep to ourselves, but we are to live it out in the context of our relationships with our spouses, our children, our workplaces, and then as we fight the fight of faith in the everyday world. So as you can see, the spiritual inheritance that's spoken of here in Paul's letter to the Ephesian church is a life practical reality. It lies at the core of our Christian identity. And thus, it doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. Our Christian identity in Jesus Christ is firm and settled and established. And so this is Pastor Malin Smith. This is the book of Ephesians the Christian Inheritance, and I thank you for joining us in today's video.